So Gar Lazar Ireland is an Irish theatre company. Uh, the joint artistic directors, Judy Hegarty Lovett and myself, Connor Lovett, live in France. For, we've lived here for 20 years, uh, about as old as the company is. And um, from here we make work, we premiere it in Ireland and we tour it all over the world. In 2011, the American playwright Will Eno wrote his play Title and Deed for Gar San Lazar Ireland. It was a, a solo show which I performed and Judy directed. Uh, we premiered it at the Kilkenny Arts Festival in 2011 and the following year, 2012, we ran it off Broadway at the Signature Theatre in New York. And in 2015, we were invited to present it at the Coronet Theatre in London uh, by Ando Winters and so began this wonderful relationship that Gar San Lazar and the Coronet have been enjoying for the past few years. In 2016 we presented our Beckett in London festival, a three-week festival with six of our productions running in, in repertory I guess. And um, in 2018 we brought How It Is Part 1 and this year, 2020, we were scheduled to bring How It Is Part 2 in April, but of course something happened in March which was going to affect everybody. And um, we've had to put that plan on hold for the moment. Currently we're rehearsing How It Is Part 3, which uh, we're planning to bring, we're planning to run all three parts together in 2021. and. We expect that the Coronet will be one of the venues for that.
Most of the material is actually derived in some way from something that Beckett wrote. So there's, there's not actually very much material in the piece, it's just extrapolated. For me, I'm just kind of looking for things to respond to, which is the words or the texture of words or the way that a uh, text can be um, deconstructed or, or uh, pulled apart and, and finding. With me, for my own musical backgrounds, kind of analogies to just take inspiration from that each night and uh, yeah, kind of interrogate us. I think I've I've performed eighteen or nineteen different Beckett uh, roles in about twenty four or twenty five different productions. Uh, only about six or seven, maybe eight or nine of them have been plays, and the rest of them have been prose titles. Uh, so yeah. What I really enjoy about it, and it's happening again just now with how it is part three, which is what we're currently working on, um, is where you'll, you'll hear something in the text that you recognize from another text. Uh, and Beckett somehow uh, seems to have used a lot of images, perhaps memories, moments from his own life, perhaps, um, where he'll he'll come back to them again and again in different texts. Uh, so, for an example, uh, in uh, in how it is, he refers at a point to um, he says, "I see a crocus in a pot in an area in a basement, a saffron. The sun creeps up the wall." A hand keeps it in the sun, this yellow flower, with a string. I see the hand, long image, hours long. The sun goes, the pot goes down, lights on the ground. The hand goes, the wall goes. And this is very close, almost identical to uh, a moment in the short story, The End, where we have the the narrator telling us about a, an experience when he was living in a basement room and he um, whatever way the window was he only had a bit of sunshine for a few hours per day so he put a plant outside on a string and he would pull the string and the plant would come up into the sunlight and he would lower it as the sun rose or fell I can't remember which so that sort of thing. So it is um, a novel uh, split into three parts, part one, two and three. Um, and it, uh, it's, it was quite a departure for Beckett as a piece of writing um, in that it was, I suppose, a, a bigger experiment than he had uh, previously done. Um, and here is a moment where he really subverts language and um, you know looks at the existential questions that he's always been looking across his canon but in a lot more I think in a, in a lot more detail um, and it's you know it's considered to be a fairly elusive piece of work but I suppose what we have always wanted and tried at least to do um, uh, as, as in Garson Lazar, the Ireland, the company, uh, is to, you know, explode the myth that Beckett is difficult and try and make it accessible. Um, and I think we have done this by staging the work in that we, you know, give it an orality, uh, we give it a visual, um, and I think that, in my opinion, has helped uh, an audience, or re, you know, in this case, an audience, um, to to reach the work in a different way, um, and it 
So each part, I suppose, so far has been kind of distinctly different to the other in that the first piece of work uh, that we did, it was part of a residency with the Everyman Theatre in Cork um, and also with the Coronet Theatre in London. Um, and, uh, you know, it very much was a kind of, we had a core team uh, who worked on the piece since 2015 together very tightly um, uh, to create what we felt was a staging that lent itself to uh, an expression of, of the novel. Um, now that's the staging, but it is important for me to point out that we are doing the text word for word. And uh, so you are getting the, the, the whole novel. Uh, you're meeting the whole novel when, when you see our staged version of it. Um, and each piece is different in that with the first piece, part one, uh, we split it into the three parts. Um, uh, part one was very much a sound design by Mel Mercier, our composer uh, and sound designer. And, uh, you know, he had a fabulous um, sound design that kind of travelled right through uh, the piece uh, from beginning to end. Uh, some of it very subtle, uh, um, other moments very elaborate. Um, and, uh, but, you know, it was electronic. And then in part two, in terms of the music content, again, we worked with the Irish Gamelan Orchestra uh, and Mel Mercia, of course, as composer. Um, and there the music was live. And of course, that brings a completely different uh, context and flavor to the to the work. Um, and but in both instances, we created uh, the piece inside of the Everyman Theatre in Cork as a site specific uh, piece and uh, that really has kind of added to uh, I suppose the 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 meaning and the um, the background to our creation uh, with with the piece and we intend for part three as well uh, to bring it back to the everyman and to bring it back to the coronet theater uh, in time um, and again, with music content, and again, this time it'll be music content with, with, with a much smaller uh, band of five or six. Rags of life in the light, I hear and don't deny, don't believe, don't say anymore who is speaking. That's not said anymore, it must have ceased to be of interest. But words like now, before came, no, no, that's not said, only mine, mine alone, one or two soundless brief. Egg blue sky and scamper of little clouds. I have my back turned to me, and the girl too, whom I hold, who holds me by the hand, the arse I have. Tired and slow we toil up towards me and vanish. The arms in the middle go through me and part of the bodies, shades through a shade. But, but I don't necessarily have to give it to people, no, I can just no. give it to that director. Yeah. Okay, there you go. Part three, after him, not before, not with. 
I have journeyed, from him, lost him. It is over, and in part three, after him. How it was, how it is, my life. Natural order, more or less, in the mud, bits and scraps. Closing my eyes, catching my breath, cocking my ears. For I close my eyes, the same old two, and see me head up, rick in the neck, hands tense in the mud. Something wrong there. Breath caught. It lasts, I last, like that a moment until the quiver of the lower face signifying I am saying, have succeeded in saying something to myself. What can one possibly say to oneself? Possibly say at such a time. A little pearl of forlorn solace. So much the better, so much the worse. That style only not so cold. Cheers. Alas, that style only not so warm. Joy, Joy and, and sorrow, sorrow, those two, there's some, some divided by two, two, and look like in like outer hell. hell. It comes, the it word, comes soon word. said, once found, soon, soon said. said. The lips stiffen and all the adjacent flesh, the hands open, the head drops. I sink a little further, then no further. It's the same kingdom as before, a moment before. The same it always was. I have never left it. It is boundless. It is boundless. God. I'm often happy, God knows, but never more than at this instant. Never so, oh, I know, happiness, unhappiness. I know, I know, but there's no harm mentioning it. There's no harm mentioning it. Above, above, if I were above, I were the, stars above the stars already, from and the from the belfries, the brief hour, there's not there's much, not more, much left more left to endure. To I gladly endure. stay as I, I am forever, but that, won't, forever, do. But that won't do. On cord, sack, sack, and neck, I do it. I must I do, do it. it. My, I I'm must regulated do it. that way. It's My the fingers way one is regulated. do it. I the can feel them. Do it. I feel them. In the mud, the dark, the face in the mud, the hands anyhow. Something wrong there. The cord in my hand, the whole body anyhow, and soon it is as if there at that place and no other I had lived. Yes, yes lived, lived always. always. God, God sometimes, sometime, somewhere, somewhere at this moment. At this moment but, but I've chanced on a good day. day. I'd gladly eat something, but I won't eat anything. The mouth opens, the tongue doesn't come out, the mouth soon closes again. Hi there, this is our cave rehearsal space that we're in right now. It's a, a subterranean stone built vaulted cave. We don't know when it dates from. Uh, we think it, it's at least 100 years old. Could be, could be more than that. Um, we don't know what it was used for. But for the past 20 years, we've been using it to rehearse. Uh, Gar Sandlazar, Ireland have made and presented I'd say 10 or 11 different shows in this space and we've also uh, workshopped and developed a number of other pieces with a number of different writers. So the Irish Gamelan Orchestra under conductor Mel Mercier, conductor composer Mel Mercier joined us on How It Is Part 2 and here in these scenes, we're about to see them uh, rehearsing for How It Is Part 2 at the Everyman Theatre in Cork in September 2019. And so I would go to the world's end, on my knees to the world's end, right round it, on my knees. Three, eight, one, four, six, one, four, four. I talk like him. Bomb will talk like me. Only one kind of talk here, one after another. It's evening. It's evening. He crawls he tiny crawls out of the sack. Of the me sack. again, I'm there again. again. The first is always me. He crawls tiny out of the sack. Alone at last, no more pin. Me alone in the dark, the mud. End at last to part two. If he talks to himself, no. Thinks, no. Believes in God, yes. The light through the through worn thread, the worn strains, thread less strains, less white, less sharp, sharp sounds. Distant, distant still, still, but less. Still. Never any Pim, never was it, never anything of all this. <laughs> long silence, well, long rest, vast I stretch of time. E. With someone to keep me company, I would have been a different man.
Instantly are not, often not, silence, rest. That sort of thing. Himself here, yes, like when one is, yes, manner of speaking, yes, if he knows how long ago, no, not even a rough idea, no, if he remembers how he lived, no, always lived like that, yes, flat on his belly in the mud, yes, with his sack, yes, in the dark, yes. Never a gleam, no. Never a soul, no. Never a voice, no. Mine the first, yes. Never stirred, no. Crawled, no. A few yards, no. Never a gleam, no. Never a soul, no. Never a voice, no. Mine the first, yes. Never stirred, no. Crawled, no. A few yards, no. 